Number 52. In reaching equilibrium, how much heat transfer occurs from one kilogram of water at 40 degrees Celsius when it is placed in contact with one kilogram of 20 degrees Celsius water in reaching equilibrium? All right. So for letter A, um, this is going back right to a concept we've uh, studied before, heat transfer. I think it's chapter 13. Uh, the heat transfer to or from an object will be equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the specific heat of the object multiplied by the change in temperature of that object. Now, um, if I want to, so there's two water, two waters basically coming together, right? There's this value of water, 40 degrees, and this value, 20 degrees. Let me just ask you, let me just ask you a question. If you have an equal mass and you have these two waters being added together, one at 40, one at 20, what do you think the final temperature is going to be? Well, probably going to be in the middle somewhere, right? Where? Well, it's going to be exactly in the middle. Why? Because you're, yield, you're using equal masses. There's symmetry to that kind of a problem. I hope, I hope that makes sense, right? Um, so what that tells me now is if I want to find the heat transferred, either I find the heat lost from this amount of water or I find the heat gained by this amount of water here. It doesn't matter, all right? Either, either way, we're just trying to find the heat transfer, right? And the heat goes from the hotter object to the colder object. So that being the case, I'm going to solve for Q here. The mass is one kilogram, they told us. The specific heat of water is 4184. You might use 4186, it doesn't matter. And then the change in temperature now, I'm going to take uh, the colder object from the colder object's perspective. So the final temperature I know of this whole system is gonna be 30 degrees, and then subtract that from the initial value of 20. So what do we get? We simply get 4184 times 10. I don't know why I need a calculator for that. But this works out to be 4.18, roughly, times 10 raised to the fourth. And that's in terms of joules. That's the heat energy gained by the cold, colder water. And that would also then equal the heat energy lost by the hotter water. If you're still struggling on why this is 30, consider this. That the heat energy lost of some object, right, from the hotter, let's just say, water, has to equal the heat energy gained by the colder water. Expand on these two formulas. This would be negative. The mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times then the change in temperature of that water. So the final temperature minus the initial of the hotter water. Remember, the initial is going to be here 40 degrees Celsius. And that's then going to equal now the mass of the colder water times the specific heat of the colder water, right? Uh, multiplied then by, I mean, these are both, this is just water though. And then multiplied by now that change in temperature, so the final temperature minus the initial temperature. But notice, these masses will cancel, okay? And the specific heats will cancel because they're the same thing. And then you have now the final temperature here, right, final temperature, minus then the initial, which in the, in the hotter case was 40 degrees, right? That will now equal the final temperature minus the initial for the colder one, which was 20. Doing the math here, how, do we, how are we going to solve this out? Remember, don't forget your negative sign here, all right, like I almost did. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, the TF's canceled. That doesn't make sense. You're going to have the negative sign there. So this basically works out to be 40 minus TF is equal to TF minus 20. So you're going to add the two Ts together, right? So it's 2TF is then equal to what? Oops, oh, well, wait, wait. So this 2TF is going to be equal to 60. Divide it, TF, oh, wait a minute, what is that, 30? Okay, that's how it arrived. Anyway, let's get rid of that. All right, that's how I knew. But instead of going through all that, even though I did it anyway, I was going to try to save time, and then I realized, eh, I guess I can't. My OCD doesn't allow me. Letter B, what is the change in entropy due to this heat transfer? So change in energy, we're talking about two separate objects, okay? So even though they come together, they're two separate objects before they kind of come together, right? So how we have to look at this is the total entropy change for the system now will be equal to the entropy change, as we developed this formula in the past few problems, of the colder object minus the entropy change for the hotter object, right? We can expand on those S's. So the total will be equal to the change in heat energy gained by the colder object 
divided by the temperature of that colder object. I'm using this formula down here, minus then the heat energy lost, right? Basically by the hotter object divided by the temperature of the hotter object. So remember, these Qs, as we just said before, will be equal, right? The heat gained by the colder object is equal to the heat lost by the hotter object. The loss is already taken into account, so don't plug it in double negative here because I already took the negative sign into account. Now all you gotta do is just plug your stuff in. So this is the change in entropy will be equal to this value, right? That's what we found, 4, 4 4.18 times 10 to the fourth, divided by the temperature of the colder object, which was 20 degrees Celsius, but you know we need that in Kelvin. So you gotta add the 273. Minus then 4.18 times 10 to the fourth, because they're equal, right? The heat energy gained and loss is equal, divided by then the temperature of the hotter object. So that's gonna be four degrees Celsius. Remember, you need that in Kelvin. And all we have to do now is just calculate this. All right, whenever you have, and you might be confused and you might say, well, some problems you took the average. Why are you now not doing the average? Why are you breaking this up? Because we're talking about two separate objects. Even though they come together, they start individually. So that's why I'm looking at them individually. If I were talking about the change in temperature of a single object, all right, uh, then I would be using the average temperature. As I've seen, you know, check out, check out the other past problems that I've done, the past four or five. Should hopefully make sense. So this is then, I'm gonna do the math here with the exact value. So it's 41,840 divided by now, parenthesis 20 plus the 273. And then that's going to be now minus the exact value, 41,840 divided by then, parenthesis 40 plus the 273. And I get about nine, nine point one two ish, right? Nine point one two. That's in terms of entropy, and therefore that's joules per Kelvin. All right, and that is now the change in entropy due to this heat transfer. That's the answer. So now it says how much work is made unavailable, taking the lowest temperature to be negative, uh, excuse me, 20 degrees Celsius, show how you follow Andrew's strategies. So here, uh, basically just memorize this particular formula. It's gonna be a variant of what I have over here, okay? The uh, work made unavailable. Okay, is going to be this. So the change in entropy, the change in total entropy, will be equal to the heat energy that's lost. In other words, the heat energy that's unavailable to do work. So I'm just going to relabel this as the work. I'm going to label it unavail. All divided by then the temperature of the colder object or the lowest temperature of the problem or the system. All I now need to do memorize this like I was mentioning, all I now need to do is just plug it in. So the temperature, the, excuse me, the entropy change was 9.12. I'm gonna do it on the upper left, 9.12. That's equal to then the work unavailable. I'm just gonna label it sub U. Min uh, multiplied by the coldest temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. But remember, you need that in Kelvin. So we had the 273 and what do we get? Let's see. So multiplied now by 20 plus the 273. And this is about, this works out to be 2 point, whoops, 2.67 or so times 10 to the third joules. Okay. And so this is the work that's unavailable. Okay. Meaning this, this was totally lost as heat. In other words. Okay. You can, you can look at this in a couple of different ways. All right. This was the total amount of he transferred, and then we found the, the unavailable amount uh, you, that can be utilized for work. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. appreciate it very much. Uh, please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit the like button. Maybe even tell your friends. We'd appreciate it so much, and we thank you in advance for that. Take care.